if you're dealing with a consultant or a well-respected agency, they're not going to want to put themselves or their people through those types of situations. So it's always best to be honest with the client and, uh, and tell them realistically whether or not they can get what they want out of it. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the SaaS SEO. So I'm your host, George Cassiotis, and today I'm very excited to be joined by one of the biggest names when it comes to SEO in the world, Steve Toth, who is an independent SEO consultant based in Toronto, Canada, with over 20,000 followers and subscribers worldwide. He has created SEO strategies to rank number one for multiple keywords with over 300,000 monthly searches and has driven over 50 million clicks from organic search for Freshbooks.com, which included a page that generated traffic valued at 42K per week. In March 2020, Steve left Freshbooks, turning his former employer into one of his clients. He now owns and operates SEOnotebook.com, a weekly SEO strategy email that is sent to over 10,000, if I'm not mistaken, subscribers right now, a list which he built from scratch in just two years. And um, Enterprise companies around the world trust Steve to guide their SEO campaigns, and he's also hard at work launching G Score, a WordPress plugin that helps people optimize their content with Google Search Console data that we will discuss uh, throughout this conversation. Steve, welcome to the show. Thanks for the intro. Um, I don't know about one of the world's best, but you know, I try. <laughs> I, I, I'll say it, uh, and people can judge uh, you know, by themselves. So before we uh, jump into the, the, the questions that I have for you, and I, I feel really excited having you on board, could you please share a few things about you, your background, and what has brought you to where you are today? Thanks. Um, yeah, for sure. So I'm just really, really passionate about SEO. I've uh, been in the space for 11 years now. Um, most of my career, I have worked for other people. Um, in the past two years um, and a bit, I've worked um, on my own. So that's uh, been um, really great, actually. Like uh, it's a whole another thing being an entrepreneur and an SEO versus just being an employee and being an SEO. You tend to learn a lot more and you have a, a whole new set of responsibilities. So. Um, I've really enjoyed that, but um, I come from SEO from more of a writing background uh, versus like, you know, a lot of people like who come in through web development, stuff like that. So I've learned all that stuff as I've done the job, not going into the job. So um, yeah, going back 10, 11 years, I was been blogging and I've been blogging for a long time. And that's really where um, I learned the most, I would say, you know, um, publishing 150 blogs for um, one agency that I worked for in, in five years or so. And then um, with SEO Notebook for the last two years, um, not missing one week and uh, yeah, doing well over 100 notes now. That's, that's really interesting. And nowadays, I know that one of the things that you are working on and that you're very passionate about, I'm, I'm reading your post about it, is G-Score. Okay. And I would really like to know what G-Score is. And obviously it's, it's still in an early stage, but who do you feel can get value out of it? Yeah, so I'll, first of all, I'll start with like what it is and why I created it. So um, G-Score is a WordPress plugin. It's gscore.io if anybody's interested in visiting the site. Um, basically it connects to Search Console and it pulls the keywords uh, for like, let's say you're on a blog post and you have a blog that does very well. It will connect to GSC and pull the keywords that that blog post is ranking for. And then it will show you which keywords you're ranking for that are not contained in your content, right? So if there's a topic that you're on page two for or page three, um, or let's say uh, within striking distance on page two, um, G-Score will let you add those keywords to a list and then um, you basically integrate those keywords into your content and, um, and then hopefully you start to rank better for those keywords, right? So um, it'll do a couple of things uh, in addition to just um, the raw keywords. It will also find the question-based keywords that you're uh, ranking for but don't have on your content. So any keyword that starts with a modifier like who, how, what, where, when, does, is, 
those types of things. It'll highlight um, those questions for you. So for example, you could easily add an H2 and 200 words and probably start to rank for that question. Uh, so the idea is basically to do it fast, right? So I know a lot of people do this uh, process manually and you know that involves like a lot of different steps, but literally I wanted to cut out all of those steps and just have you be able to do this directly in WordPress. Um, so it's kind of, um, you know, in the time that you could do, let's say five of these optimizations manually, um, you could probably do 25 in G-score, right? Just because you're saving time. That's interesting. To be honest with you, we haven't tested the, the tool yet, but since you are behind it, uh, we will definitely test it. But as I understand it, it, it belongs to this new category, let's say, of conduct optimization tools. And the question that I have for you, if that's you know, indeed the, the case with, with uh, G-score, most of these tools work with um, NLP and entity extraction and identific identification and so on. How did you decide about using uh, Google Search Console data um, instead, which is something that with the tools that we are using, I, I don't see. Yeah, so <clears throat> um, this is a process that I've been doing for my clients for over like two years now, really since I started. Um, and I was doing it manually. I actually had a Chrome extension developed that maybe I'll release one day, but the Chrome extension, um, you would basically get the keywords from Search Console, go into a Google Doc, paste the keywords into the Chrome extension, and then um, edit your content with that. Um, so it's something that I've been doing for a long time and um, having great success with. Like for example, even like last week, um, I reported some progress to a client where their share of voice increased from 3% to 11%. Uh, based on some of the G-score optimizations that we did. So basically they um, just integrated a lot of uh, missing keywords back into their content. And, you know, coming into the SaaS space of the on-page optimization space, um, I wanted something that was very difficult to argue with, you know, in terms of its efficacy. Um, so, you know, I, that's why I wanted to base this on, on Google Search Console, um, just because it's your own data, um, you know, this is something that it's very, very hard to argue that it would hurt your site or be um, something that, you know, wouldn't really move the needle. Um, I feel very confident that people who end up using G-Score are going to have great results. Yeah. And I guess that if anything, Google Search Console data is kind of, quote unquote, the, the ultimate source of truth when it comes to organic search data. So it makes sense. Speaking of content optimization tools, I'm sure that you're aware of the term copycat content. And my question is, if you see this as an actual problem that Google sooner or later is going to do something about uh, or not, and if the answer to the first question is yes, what do you think brands can do uh, to create content that ranks, uh, but without copying the top of the search results? Yeah, so that I think this is a problem for Google, but I also think those tools still have a place. And what I mean by that is um, if you were Google, would you want to show 10 results on page one that all provided the exact same information? Probably not. Like it would frustrate users to just, you know, click on three results on page one and not find anything different between those, right? And we're at the point now where so many people are using these tools that Google could easily find 10 results for a very like high majority of the SERPs that are all the same, right? So um, I would kind of caution against solely relying on those tools to help you with your research. That said, I think, you know, you need to cover the topics that everybody else is covering, but how can you cover them in addition to what everybody else is covering, right? So I think there is still a, a really important place for unique research and, um, and you know, that sort of idea of information gain, right? So like how, what, what new information are you bringing to the table? Um, you know, what recent information, if there's developments in your industry, are you uh, writing about? Um, all of those things can help you rank. Okay, thanks for sharing that. Now. I'd like to shift gears a bit and discuss Freshbooks. And un undoubtedly, one of your most successful case studies 
and I guess that one of the most successful case studies in the SaaS industry in general was Freshbooks and what you achieved there. Can you please share with us what were the main pillars of Freshbooks organic growth success? What did it take you to get the website from where it was to the levels that and the highs that it is? You know. Yeah. Thanks. Um, the it's been a, a lot of fun to work on that site. Like um, I don't work with Freshbooks anymore. Um, kind of uh, just moved on, but. Um, when I started in 2018, um, they had a set of invoice templates pages, um, but they weren't really performing very well. Um, there was a lot of like duplicate content on there. Um, they weren't converting very well. Um, they were just kind of there. And um, when I started, um, we were working with an agency that made the recommendation to redirect 50 pages into the main invoice templates page, and it completely tanked it um and we were just kind of like really not doing so good as an seo department um it was literally my first week and i was reviewing these redirects and i was like i don't think we should do this and then they're like sorry it's too late and then everything just went downhill um but we relaunched um 110 pages uh based on invoice templates so invoice templates for contractors for graphic designers for um, artists for all these different um verticals and, um, and then we internal, internally linked everything um, really well together. We used um, some advanced tools like Quora. Um, this was also around the time that um, Kyle Roof um, ranked Rhinoplasty Plano. So I really studied um, that site and um, tried to replicate a lot of the very precise on-page optimization that Kyle did with that site on the invoice template site. So I ended up learning a ton from that. And then actually later on, about a year later, I went on to work with Kyle, uh, collaborate with him on some projects there. And, um, and then, um, yeah, we launched these pages in January, 2019. Um, automatically, they converted twice as good as the old pages. Um, because of some of the uh, CRO that we did to them. And then over time, um, by the summer of 2019, we were ranking number one for invoice template, which had uh, 300,000 searches per month. So, um, you know, that keyword was just huge uh, for FreshBooks. And uh, we ended up, uh, I think, between all those pages generating um, 11,000 trials a month. That's... That's massive. Like, uh, because I had the, uh, the, the question of whether or not, obviously getting traffic and people on the website is, is great. But my question is whether or not, you know, this, uh, for example, someone coming on the website and uh, downloading a, an invoice template in Word uh, format, for example, a bit further down the line will turn them into a, uh, a free trial or a customer and so on. But I guess that you, you have seen this, this correlation happen, yes? Yeah, so it, the, the thing about this is like, th there's such high volume. Um, like you look at any of those SERPs, like there's people, like always, always people bidding. And there's a lot of people coming into the auction, coming out of the auction. Um, but there's like, you know, companies, like I think SAP had a company called concur.com or .c, I can't remember. Um, and they were just always number one in the ads, like spending tons of money um, on invoice template. Um, you know, there's, it's such high volume that even if, you know, um, like 10%, like it was something like around 10% um, converting to a visit to trial. And then uh, I don't want to give away the specifics on trial to paid, but it was, um, it was pretty good. So you, when you have that kind of volume, um, you can you can generate a lot of uh, a lot of customers. Okay, that sounds very good. On the same topic, I would like to uh, discuss uh, what was your thought process back then about resource sourcing and allocation. Was it a combination of in-house resources and agencies or freelancers, consultants, and so on, or you wanted to handle everything in-house? And yeah. also a follow up to that, sorry, would be uh, how did you map specific con SEO activities to the resources you had available? Like, how did you go about deciding this is something that we have to outsource? This is something that we can handle in house. 
So we were a super lean team in house. Um, it was actually, I was the only SEO manager there for quite a long time. And then we hired um, one other person to, to help. Um, and, uh, and the two of us uh, basically um, control the budget. Like um, his name is Wesley, um, Wesley Ng. Um, and he's, he's over at Shopify now, he's a great guy. Um, but, you know, Wesley and I basically just had free reign to do whatever we wanted. And we had a budget to work with as well. So um, I mentioned at the beginning, we had an agency um, that was pretty much doing everything, like all the on-page recommendations, like they weren't link building, but like they were basically handling and directing and setting the course for everything. And um, once I came in, um, we kind of pulled pulled back on um, their executive decision making, which honestly made a lot of bad bad decisions. Um, and then uh, we let go of them in January of 2019 when we launched those invoice templates pages. And um, uh, we, we you know we had this large budget, and um, we I set myself to say like I want to hire like all the best people that I admire. And we did not put all our eggs in one basket. We hired like probably 20, 25 different people to do different things um, during 2019. Uh, we were very lucky. We didn't have uh, very many restrictions. Um, my director, a guy named Chris Cisco, was just incredible. Like he would improve, approve everything, <laughs> you know, um, and I uh, didn't ask any questions, basically let us do our job. And, um, you know, it was selfishly for my, you know, my own interests. Um, it was a great way to network with people and get to know people, you know, like I got to know Kyle Roof and, um, you know, made a friendship there and stuff. Right. So, um, selfishly, like it was great for that reason, but for the company, it was excellent because, um, you know, we had very, very expert, um, we, we hired experts in very narrow disciplines. So if somebody was known for their skills on internal linking, I would hire them to just make recommendations specifically on internal linking and that was it. I think and I learned from them. Yeah, obviously. I think that, you know, this is exactly what your role should be as the person who drives the strategy inside the company. But I, I would like to ask a follow-up question to that. Besides this experience with agencies, I would like to know in general, what is your thought about a software company that is in the growth stage and want to accelerate things um, do you think that agencies can fit into that picture uh, and actually, you know, drive an impact? Yeah, agencies play an important role. I mean, um, it's very hard to to hire um, like a large team in house, right? So, um, the only one I can really think of that probably has any sort of success is um, like Shopify's SEO team. That's like over twenty people, led by Kevin Indig and has my former colleague Wesley in it, right? Um, that's the kind of team that, you know, does not rely as much on external vendors, but, um, you know, even a company of FreshBook size, which is now like around 500 people, um, they're, they're not spending um, very much of their, like they have a large budget, but actually they don't spend that much of the budget on SEO, but there's still substantial budget there. And, um, and the other thing to know about, you know, like these SaaS companies that um, are at the FreshBooks level is that um, sometimes spending a budget is a challenge, um, like, you know, just being able to spend it. So, um, uh, you know, agencies for link building, content writing, uh, SEO consulting, um, all have a place there. Can I ask you, in your opinion and in your experience, there will be people who listen to, to this episode who uh, work in SaaS. When do you think a SaaS company should start uh, investing in actively in content SEO? Uh, good question. So it really depends on the CMO um, and oftentimes like the um, you know the CMO's direction from like finance and even from beyond that. Um, the CEO and how much they believe um, in, in the impact of organic. Some don't believe in it at all. Uh, but if you look at FreshBooks' history, um, Mike McDermott, who was, who was the CEO, um, 
used to used to have an SEO agency, um, like in the early 2000s. And that's where really FreshBooks was born out of the need for them to invoice their clients. Um, so there's a long history there, right? Uh, but um, you know, other companies who are more performance um, marketing based, they need to see dollars out and dollars in. And if they don't, if they can't see that on a monthly basis and make all of their decision making based on dollars in and dollars out, they have a hard time reconciling that. So um, they are a lot more reluctant to invest in SEO. I mean, I have a client um, who's a very well known brand. And um, it's not a regular client, but this is somebody who hired me while I was at FreshBooks. And I just think they're missing so many opportunities, but they are one of these very performance marketing focused organizations. And they have a hard time in even investing in making like technical optimize, like technical fixes to their website. They've just got so much other stuff going on that they miss the organic opportunity. But I mean, hey, you know, you look at a company like that, I don't want to name them, but like they've got an amazing email list, they've got a crazy social presence, they've got so many other things going for them that they look at SEO as not really something that's going to make as big an impact as those other channels. Yeah, and it's not- They may be wrong too though. Yeah, 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 of course. And it's, I guess, I get it. It's not a priority for everyone, but follow up, I guess, uh, to that would be, do you feel or have you is is that something that happened to you a company software company comes to you and you tell them essentially you know what this is not your thing don't don't do it invest in go invest in something else because i don't know you are kind of introducing a new product in the market which is kind of rare around nowadays let's uh, we, specifically with with software companies let's say that you have a, a new category um and seo obviously is not your thing because people are not searching for that online uh, have you experienced something like that? Yeah, for sure. So um, I think it's the other thing that I've experienced in working for agencies that kind of said yes to everybody was that like, it's terrible. It gives SEO a bad name. Um, they literally just like want the first six months of revenue and then they click, then they cancel and then they rinse and repeat. Right. But um, somebody who's in charge of their, you know, who like, if you're dealing with a consultant or a well-respected agency, they're not going to want to put themselves or their people through those types of situations. So it's always best to be honest with the client and, uh, and tell them realistically whether or not they can get what they want out of it. Yeah. Yeah. And we try to do the same because we have companies either, you know, when it comes to the stage, we, we tell them that you're not at the stage stage yet to, to invest in that or, let's say the, the product is kind of operating in a, in, a, in a slightly new space. And we essentially tell them that we don't see uh, potential in, in, in that. So it's better to invest in something else rather than investing and spending time and money uh, in, into uh, SEO. Now, I would like to switch gears a bit and discuss something uh, different, which is AI generated con and I would like to, to know your thoughts when it comes to AI, AI uh, generates con for, for con SEO. I think it works right now. Um, it's not something that I would do with the types of clients that I service. Um, most of the clients that I work with would are easily able to, to afford um, their own writers. But if I was starting like an affiliate site, for example, um, I would definitely consider AI content at this point. Um, I, I have a couple of um, accounts in my search console that um, are using uh, strictly AI content, and I can see for myself that it does work. Um, obviously, you have to balance that with the you know, usefulness of the content. Um, is it going to get links because it provides great information? Probably not. Um, is it going to convert um, users because it's like a really compelling sales email? Probably not. Uh, but what it could do is give you an idea um, on what, you know, if your topic research is really good, like if you're providing like good topical coverage on a niche um, and you're creating AI articles based on your careful research, it could give you an idea about which articles to come back and improve. 
um, later and also let you get um, a lot sort of out there. Um, but I think it also pre presents a problem for Google um, if we have, you know, suddenly, you know, 500 page websites being able to spawn up in a month um, and you just have all of this, you know, there's also user generated content that's a problem for Google. But I think both those two things are causing some of the issues with indexing right now and um, and something that Google is going to eventually um, bring a hammer down uh, would be my guess. Speaking of indexing, what are your thoughts on uh, index now and, you know, initiatives like like that? Uh, do you think that this is where things are going, like creators and brands bringing the con to the search engine or uh, it will continue being, you know, the opposite? Yeah, for Google, I mean, like there there's a message in Search Console that just says, like, has your page changed significantly? Like, go ahead and try to re-index it. Or like, you know, reading that message, like, um, you know, I, I, I was dealing with a, a new site in the crypto space about nine months ago, and uh, we were having trouble getting our pages indexed. And it just took a long time. It took like two months, I think, to get these. And they were good pages. Like they were, you know, like very well written, amazing design, all these things. And, um, it took two months to get them to get them up, right? So we actually did change the content a little bit, um, and then finally they got indexed, and one of them just like took off like a rocket um, uh, as as a brand new site with like a DR of two um, in the crypto space. It was actually quite remarkable to watch it. But even though that page did so well, it took two months for it to index. Yeah, and I guess that there are several issues and, and I can see also issues with publishers bringing the con to the search engine because I can see people abusing that feature and, you know, uh, with AI generated con bringing too much con uh, to people the search engine. It. Yeah, definitely. I guess <laughs> that they will. Now, I know that you have experienced SEO as the director of SEO at two different agencies um, as an in-house employee at a SaaS company as a freelance consultant, and now as a creator of your own software company that helps companies with their uh, content SEO efforts. And I would like to ask, seeing SEO through all these different lenses, what are, in your experience, the skills that most software companies or other companies for that matter miss um, and are willing to pay uh, to acquire when it comes to content SEO? Great question. Um, I think if I was running a SaaS company or an agency or anybody and I was to make like my first real like significant SEO hire, let's say at the senior or director level, um, I, I would want somebody who has um, like an entrepreneurial or an entrepreneurial spirit um, because those people will go out of their way um, to find ways to grow um, the company, right? So if you don't have that kind of drive um, and you're just okay with, um, you know, doing your keyword research and just kind of doing things, um, doing your job per se and not going outside of your job, um, you're not going to really get great results. Uh, but if you have that sort of entrepreneurial or entrepreneurial people who work at companies kind of drive who who have that um, that bent, then I think you know you're you're probably pretty well off. Um, you're pretty you're pretty you can be pretty confident to hi um, hire those people. But I think also those people are in few and far between, and um, and then they often become like me and leave and do their own thing. So it's a double edged sword. But I think if you can get a person like that at your company for one or two or, you know, like for me, like I spent, you know, eight or nine years in the working world, um, those th those people can really help grow uh, your, your, your business. Um, so that's what I would look for personally and try and build a relationship and inspire those people, stay close to them, uh, learn what their needs are and uh, and kind of try try and yeah, try and find those those unicorns. I think that's a great answer. Steve, can you please uh, tell us what we can expect from you, SEO Notebook, G-Score uh, in the near future? 
Yeah, um, SEO Notebook will just continue. I mean, like there's no shortage of ideas and just for anybody that doesn't really know what it is, um, it's not an, it's, it's an email that goes out weekly, but it's not a newsletter. It's not a recap of like the latest news in SEO. It's just one curated piece of strategy each week um, in the form of a Notion. Uh, Note used to be Evernote, but now I switched to Notion. And um, it's just something that you can try, right? It's, it's not something that takes, um, you know, weeks or months to implement. Uh, it's just something that you can go ahead and try and incorporate into your workflow. And uh, I know it's helped a lot of people. And then um, gscore.io, um, you can currently sign up to the waitlist um, to uh, be the first to, to try that product. Uh, we're just working through um, some of the testing right now. So it's um, in the hands of different people. And you can imagine with a WordPress plugin, there's um, lots of different environments that it gets installed with different plugins that it also has to um, be compatible with and stuff like that. So we're just making sure um, to minimize those types of conflicts before we release. Uh, and then we'll, we'll release it in batches, I think, um, in the new year, in 2022. Okay. okay. And let me just say here for the record that uh, SEO Notebook, as we were discussing before we, uh, we start the, the recording, I find it to be very useful. Uh, and many of the notes are like we pass them on internally as, you know, as processes. I remember one, uh, you were using uh, a Google Doc, simple Google Doc, to kind of predict what Google uh, will uh, essentially um, uh, suggest next. Um, and you, you use that to get the feature snippet of a page uh, or something like that. And I find, I find it to be really, 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 really useful, uh, both for, I guess, someone who is new in, in the SEO world, but also for more advanced uh, people. Yeah, so. thanks. Um, that one was a lot of fun. Um, that was actually funny because that client uh, never signed on with me last year. Um, they, uh, they, uh, they let me test stuff out on their site. And then yesterday I had a call with them and, and looks like they're going to sign up a year later. So that's, uh, that's kind of funny. Um, and also if uh, people want to subscribe to my YouTube channel, it's SEO Notebook. Uh, you can just search it on YouTube and subscribe there. I have about uh, 18 videos so far. So trying to um, do those when I can. That's all uh, very, very good to know. Steve, thank you very much for being on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. It was a pleasure.